the Mets. Me. Lonzo cracks oh. one of the Mets oh. win the ball game. Out of sight. <laughs> Listening to the Shea and Sons Podcast with your hosts, Keith and Keyshawn Diaz. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Shea and Sons Podcast. Que lo que, que lo que, que la que hay, que la que hay. What's going on, baby brother? What up, what up? What's going on? We got a, we got a good one. Uh, a, a guy that I really like. Okay, okay. Yo, so that means we're, if, if, if baby brother likes him, it's usually a pitcher. We are going into the reliever market. Something that we really need, ladies and gentlemen. And we're heading over to Houston. The guys who are playing in the ALCS, the Houston Astros. And we're talking today about Hector Neris. Next season, he's going to be 34 years old. He currently is, like I mentioned, on the Houston Astros. Relief pitcher, right-handed pitcher. Um, current market value at $7.6 million uh, AAV. Uh, we think he's going to probably command a two-year deal. His agent is Octagon. It's probably Spanish, you know, agent roughly. Um, has an F4 of 2.5 for a rel- uh, reliever, a seventh inning guy. That's pretty freaking good, you know. So, And I know the Houston Astros are loving what they're getting from him this season. Baby brother, you lead the way. Talk to us uh, about Hector Neris. Norris is a very familiar guy. If you've been watching Mets baseball, he was a Philadelphia Philly for eight years. Um, his career ERA during his time with the Phillies uh, was 3.42 from what I'm reading. Yep, correct. Um, but, the, but the last two seasons with Houston, he's been at a 2.69 ERA. Um, he's been as good as advertised this season with a 1.71 ERA. Um this is a very familiar face within the division. That kind of gives me a little bit of pause of concern because, you know, the division has seen him for so long. And those early years in Phillies, he was on the Phillies. He wasn't really that great. Um, but he's definitely caught a second wind in his career with Houston. And I think that that is a very good sign because you think about Houston, they're able to, you know, adapt and create bullpen arms and create starting pitching arms that end up flourishing um, throughout the season. So I think it's all about what you surround them with. And if you're not asking a lot out of Hector Norris, I think that's a very good thing. And Houston, they've called upon them because he's performed, but they haven't. They didn't really need to use him as much as you know Philadelphia was using him. So the interesting thing about Hector Neris, I didn't mention earlier when we were talking about his AAV, he's actually on a player option, $8.5 million. Um, in terms of production, from what I'm seeing here, he's pretty darn good this season. I have to give him, I have to tip my cap. He's been probably one of the better pitchers in the Houston bullpen. I think the best arm in that bullpen right now is this guy named Abreu. He's, he's nasty, but Neris has been very very consistent 77 strikeouts in 68 innings so he's giving you a strikeout or more in an inning Uh, that's pretty impressive the whip it's 1.054 very impressive his uh he's not giving up the home run ball at all really um the K per nine is at a 10.1. The walks per nine is at a 4.1. This is a very impressive season for Hector Neris. Um, you did mention if you you know have been living under a rock, he, he has a long history against the New York Mets. And shout out to Don Smith, who also almost got into an altercation with this man. Um, Hector Neris, though, he's one of those guys that you root for him to lose. It's going to sound messed up, I know. But he's just one of those guys that you just don't like. But he's he's on your team, you love him. You know what I'm saying? But if he's not on your team, you want him to just, you know, pretty much shit the bed. You know, he had, right, to be, right. he had that random moment altercation with Julio Rodriguez, you know, and then he walks away. Like, you know, like yeah. fake tough guy vibes, whatever. But he is a very good pitcher. I have to give him credit. Um, would it be an ideal fit for the New York Mets? Obviously, we... we Pretty much almost any bullpen option right now would be an ideal fit because the bullpen is so bad. Um, the, the thing, though, is that Houston has so many upcoming situations with so many relievers in that bullpen. 
that they may have to like really figure out who are they gonna pick to stay because I, I really don't know who's in line to replace these guys but off the top of my head I think they got about between three or four like mainstay guys and we're gonna be talking about them in the future we talked about one in Phil Maton where they may lose r r big names that Dusty Baker has called upon especially yeah. last year and this season to give these guys you know the, the starter some relief that they you know they have down there in Houston and a player option at eight point five million dollars, and re could argue he's been the best pitcher for the team. And you know they're going deep into the playoffs. I can see him trying to test the market. Um, eight point five million dollars is v very hefty. But the thing about the option that for Norris, I think benefits him is that he's a free agent after the, you know the, the, the excuse me he's a free agent if they pick up that option. You know two thousand twenty four eight point five million dollars, and then in two thousand twenty five free agent. So. He can gamble on himself if he picks up that option, but then would have to perform mightily good again, or, and then he's up there in age, or he opts out and tests the market now to get like a three to four year deal. Interesting situation for Houston, in my opinion, because if he, it's up to what Houston decides to do, because if he opts out, Houston's gonna have to, they're gonna lose him, they don't know if they're gonna bring back Phil Maton, and there's a lot of other names that they're going to have to address this offseason. So, and we all know Houston, you know, they have paid a, a reliever in the past in Rafael Montero. Right. But they also, like, haven't paid big names. You know what I'm saying? So, they, they the way they pick and choose who they need to pay and when they need to pay them is very, very, very savvy. But they're okay with letting guys go. So, if he tells them, I'm not going to stay here for $8.5 million, I'll find something better on the, on the market. I think Houston would be like, okay, go. Um, in terms of a fit, I think we both can agree he'd be a perfect fit here. But do you think yeah. he'd be a good pitcher in terms of, like, the New York media and, and performing here and trying to get the bridge to Edwin Diaz? I think that's part of, you know, one of the things that you have to consider when you're looking at a guy like this, like, He's had issues in Philadelphia, whether it be warranted or not. Um, we've obviously seen that with Dom Smith. Um, you just had, to your point, an issue with Julio Rodriguez. So that could be something to give, you know, caution, um, especially with the New York media and the market. When I think about Norris and I think about his player option, I think that Houston, if they pick it up, they're probably betting that he's an ascending player at a late stage because he's had two good years with them. And with Philadelphia, he was a very good, he was, he was solid, but he wasn't where he is now. And he's, he's sporting a 1.71 ERA this year. And he's pitching in the playoffs, obviously. So do they think that they're getting him at a bargain at eight uh, mil a season? Who knows? Um, but I do think that he would be costly. And as for a fit for the Mets, I think it all depends upon what you have around him. If you're not asking too much of Hector Norris, I think that's a good thing. Hector Norris is like that reggaeton song that you, you, you haven't heard in a while that, 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 that gets you off your feet. And then you probably don't listen to it for another like month or two. He's one of those guys that like, yeah. oh, Hector Norris is doing good. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you forget all about him, you know. So, um, he'd be an ideal fit for for the Mets in terms of what he can bring production wise. Um, I, I I mean I I have to admit one thing this team lacks is a little attitude. I yeah, wouldn't I true. wouldn't mind a reliever coming to this team and being a total asshole. I actually wouldn't. And but the thing is, you know, I don't know if that's welcome here. You know, we don't know who the manager is. We don't know you know the GM now. You know, so. Right. You know, it's going to be a very interesting situation with Hector, Hector Norris and what he does and what he, you know, his future unfolds to be in Houston and uh, as well for the Mets and the bullpen. But let us know what you think about Hector Norris. Um, is he going to pick up the player option? Is he not? Let us know in the comments. Shoot us a like, subscribe, and you know what I'm saying? Show us some love on all the platforms. And um, yeah, that's, baby, that's it, baby. Let's wrap it up. Let's fucking go Mets. On all social media platforms. And stay tuned for the next episode.